Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are working on making steel black. <laughs> Not all that exciting, maybe, to you, but um, to me, it is pretty darn cool. This is a surface finish known as parkerizing. It is similar to bluing. Um, however, I think bluing is probably a little more aesthetically pleasing for a uh, if you have a nice finish on your part, I would probably go for bluing. But if it's a part you purely want functional, rust resistant, abrasion resistant, and I'll be honest, I love the matte black look. I think parkerizing is a great solution and very easy to do at home. You can see it's also pretty abrasion resistant. Focus. And it is a little shiny right there where I was scratching it. You see a couple other places I really went at it and was able to break through. But it is a nice hard coating that's abrasion resistant, rust resistant. It likes to soak up oil, so it really helps keep the rust away. And you can really get into the weeds on this stuff. There's tons of different additives you can add to your parkerizing bath, like small amounts of nickel um, that'll actually, I think, make the crystal size tighter so it's even harder or whatever. <laughs> I don't know the exact mechanics of it. I don't have a scanning electron microscope. But what I have here is a very basic recipe that works really, really well. I've been doing at least a couple months worth of experimenting with this and finding a solution that really works well. And this is one I'm actually very, very happy with. Um, it just, it works. Also, I do want to apologize for my long absence from YouTube. It has been quite a while. Um, unfortunately, life just got incredibly busy. Uh, I also had a pretty bad back injury um, that prevented me from doing a lot of, a lot of fun stuff. So, <laughs> luckily that seems to be pretty well healed. And uh, at this point, I'm getting back to the workshop. So, thank you very much guys for bearing with me. I got a ton of comments asking if I'm okay. and. Um, I try to respond to a, a lot of them. I think most of them. Um, so thank you guys for reaching out. I do appreciate you. So let's get on to the recipe that I have been using here. Um, I tried so many different variations, starting from recipes that I found online, uh, reading through patents, reading through MSDS sheets. You can actually see here I have Brownell's MSDS sheet, which... Um, was pretty helpful on figuring out what compounds really work for this. Um, theirs is a concentrate, so it's a little different than what we're doing here, but we're mostly, we're essentially going to have all the same compounds in our solution outside of the nickel. Um, I do have some nickel carbonate handy, but I think pretty much all soluble nickel compounds are carcinogenic, and I don't want to mess with it, so staying away from that. So looking at the Brownells MSDS, um, you can see they have phosphoric acid, manganese salt. So that's the manganese phosphate in solution. Phosphoric acid, so you want your solution to be a little acidic, so they have an excess of, pho of phosphoric acid. Manganese nitrate. Now, I had previously made some manganese nitrate for test solutions. I used it all up, but I have found you actually don't need manganese nitrate by itself. You can just add a little bit of nitric acid. Um, very tiny amount, just a couple milliliters, and that's all you need. Iron sulfate. Um, I didn't have any iron sulfate handy, so I dissolved some chunks off of an old cast iron bathtub uh, from renovation uh, in some dilute sulfuric acid, crystallized it out, and got left with some beautiful iron sulfate crystals. So um, it's dirt cheap. You can order it online for... Uh, all kinds of purposes. I think it's mostly used for agricultural. I think it like makes grass greener, uh, the iron. And then the final ingredient in theirs is the nickel nitrate. Um, again, I'm leaving the nickel out of it. Uh, I don't like nickel salts. Uh, I tend to be rather messy and don't want cancer. So. so what I eventually settled on for the homemade solution uh, is for every liter of distilled water, or in this case I'm just using RO water, is 12 milliliters of 85% phosphoric acid. You can adjust those numbers if you're using the uh, the weaker stuff from you know the Home Depot store, like, like the Prep and Etch 
uh, the clean strip. I don't know exactly what percentage is that. You might have to titrate it to test, but uh, five grams of manganese carbonate, um, which I have here. I just ordered this from the ceramic shop. Pretty slow shipping. You might have a local ceramic store. <laughs> it's probably a lot faster. Um, one and a half milliliters of nitric acid. Now I'm using concentrated nitric. I only happen to have red fuming nitric handy, so you might want to bump that up to maybe like two milliliters if you're using 70% uh, azeotropic nitric acid and two grams of iron sulfate, which again, the bathtub crystals. That sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? <laughs> Fucking Heisenberg over here. So let's get to making our solution. I'm going to have it warmed up because I'm going to use it pretty much immediately and show you guys the results here. So we're going to have one liter of water. This is the smallest graduated cylinder I have handy, so not the most accurate measurement here, but we'll get to it. All right, we got 12 milliliters of our 85% phosphoric acid. Five grams of manganese carbonate. Close enough. Now we'll add the manganese carbonate in slowly. This is concentrated nitric. I should not be handling it with blue gloves. This is bad technique, but this is a uh, plastisol coated bottle and it is so sticky and disgusting that I'd rather What a terrible rationale, huh? Alright, so there's a milliliter of red fuming nitric. Now the nitric acid seems to reduce the amount of sediment that forms from this process. At least that is what I've read in a lot of patent information. Nice thing is this process doesn't off-gas um, nitrogen dioxide, which I did worry was a possibility. Now that's not to say that can't happen, so do not try this at home, <laughs> and definitely don't try it in a non-ventilated area. Now we have everything added but the iron sulfate. So I'm just going to measure out two grams of iron sulfate, and you can see we're still not fully dissolved, so we have a lot of manganese carbonate suspended in solution and also settling out. But as soon as we add these Heisenberg crystals, all right, so just over two grams of iron sulfate, and we will add that to our mixture. Hi highly soluble, so that should dissolve pretty quick despite them being pretty large crystals. In past experience, the iron sulfate, and I'm not sure how the chemistry of this actually works, but it seems to help dissolve the, yeah, you can see it already clearing up. Um, it helps to dissolve the manganese, the insoluble manganese salts in the solution. I'm not sure how the addition of the iron sulfate does that. Maybe the manganese iron phosphate is more soluble in solution than just manganese phosphate. Um, I couldn't really find data on that. So just a few minutes later and you can see our solution has gone nice and clear, just like our boy Tom Cruise, with the exception of the CO2 bubbles that are coming up. But it is really interesting how the addition of the iron sulfate really seems to contribute to increasing the solubility of the manganese salts. It was the addition of iron phosphate that really changed this process for me. Without it, I was not getting great results. Um, this stuff really works magic for this process. Now, another trick to manganese parkerizing, it needs to be just under the boiling temperature of water. Um, you can't do it at lower temperatures like you can with zinc parkerizing. So I'm going to go degrease the heck out of this part, spray it down in uh, all kinds of fun cancer-causing compounds. Get rid of every trace of oil on here. All right, got to break out everyone's favorite, the cum gutter. 
clean this part off before we parkerize. Make sure it is free of any machining oils or residue on its surface. You gotta be nuts, like OCD level clean here. Um, any, any residue on this part and it will not parkerize properly. And of course, after you clean it, you cannot touch it with your dirty human fingers, otherwise your oils will transfer to it. <laughs> and I would not even set this park down on a workbench before park rising. I'll hang it up on the rafters here, make sure it doesn't come into contact with anything until I'm ready to dip it into the solution. Also, do not do this in a non-ventilated area. I have the exhaust fan going, can't even small thing here. So you can see here, I got my three steps. A nice hot citric acid solution, one tablespoon of citric in uh, 500 milliliters of boiling hot water. And I'm just gonna let that piece sit in there for 10, maybe 15 minutes. Let me actually hang that on. I don't want it going uneven. I'm gonna throw another part in there for me. So here we have the steel parts just bubbling away in the citric solution, just lightly etching that surface, creating the little nucleation sites we want for the park rising to really bite into. Um, again, a lot of guys would just sandblast their parts, degrease them and throw them in the park rising. My sandblaster ain't working, or ain't set up. So we're just gonna use a nice little citric etch here. You can see my solution's yellow because I've used it quite a few times. I just heat it up in the microwave when I need it. 10 minute timer is up. Take the parts out of the citric. We got a nice matte sheen to them. Dunk them right in some, uh, I was gonna say distilled water. This is just RO water, but same, same, but different. Use either one, no problem. And now we're gonna dunk them in our park solution. And there they are, parkerizing away. So I'm gonna let these parts go for about 25 minutes and we will come back, pull out our park parts, drop them in some oil. All right, these parts have been going for about half an hour. I went a little bit longer here. And we'll take them out, give them a quick dunk. funny you can actually see the um, how the different grades of steel react so you can see that trigger was made of a few different types of steel the one gets much darker than the other this kind of looks more of a green parkerizing color but once they're dipped in oil it'll all end up pretty black drop them right in the oil and leave them there overnight you probably want to leave them in oil at least 24 hours, maybe even a little longer. You would probably shorten that up if the oil bath is hot. That way it creeps into the pores faster. So there we go, a nice parkerized cylinder. Made with a uh, pretty easy DIY parkerizing solution. Now the Trigger component, I'm not totally happy with the way this was looking. I looked at it a few hours ago. I think I'm probably gonna buff this and try it again. One thing I have noticed about this solution is the first batch or two of parts that come out of it aren't as black as I usually like to see. Actually, that looks pretty good. Not bad. Um, so I would recommend running a couple test steel parts through it for your first batch. Well guys, there you have it, how to parkerize steel parts at home. I hope you guys enjoyed, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, you know, all the YouTube bullshit. <laughs> and I will see you guys next time, have a great one.